Marvel's The Punisher by Beam Software and published by LJN. In The Punisher, you play as Frank Castle, who after his family was brutally murdered in a drug hit, goes out to take revenge on all crime as violently as possible. He sets his sight on the kingpin. First, he has to dispatch several lower level mobsters before he can confront the big man. That is about all the plot the game has to offer, which is a shame as it's based on a Marvel comic, so having more context leading into each level would be a nice touch for the fans. You get a little description of the boss Frank is going to go relieve of their mortal coil, but not much. It would be cool to see a little comic panel of the thug doing some dastardly crime and the Punisher vowing to offer a little long distance acupuncture. The game begins with a level select screen as you pick the boss you wish to go up against. 5. Not counting the kingpin. Each level consists of three stages, two where Frank goes full on Charles Bronson on the streets. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. Well, you're going to meet him. And the third as he confronts the boss of the level. The game provides a kill count at the end of the level so you can see how much blood you got on your hands. Nobody except the sax man is innocent, so fire away. Depending on your percentage of kills, you are awarded with extra health, ammo, extra life, or even a super gun. So it pays to kill them all and let God sort them out. Gameplay is a mixed bag. The shooting gallery gameplay can be fun for short play sessions, but as the Punisher can only move, and even then slowly, when not firing his gun, it can make dodging enemy fire difficult. I think being able to press down on the dodge would have been preferable, especially in boss fights as they often have moves that seem unavoidable. Controls Punisher's skills are as limited as his interests. Shoot guns with A, throw grenades, and maybe if you're lucky launch a rocket launcher or two with B. If it bleeds, Frank wants to kill it. The game could have benefited from additional gun types. As you only have a standard automatic rifle, and occasionally an even faster automatic rifle. Throughout the level, you're encouraged to shoot everything you can to reveal power-ups or sometimes bonus stages. Here, Frank becomes like his on-screen actor, Dolph Lundgren, because whenever he sees a window, he says, I must break you. It would have added a nice strategy element to the game to avoid innocent characters but as it is, the streets are populated, with one exception, with criminals only. Don't wait for them to pull the trigger, shoot them where they stand. The exception is the sax man, who must be deaf, blind, and lost his sense of smell, because he plays in the middle of war zones and even the sewer. The controls do what they need to do, but it would have scored higher if Frank had a little bit more maneuverability and options. I give the controls 3 out of 5. Graphics. The graphics mostly do their job here. At first, they're almost impressive. The character animation isn't bad, and while everything is dark and gritty, it's an appropriate dark and gritty. Like you walked into the set of the taxi driver. Are you talking to me? That said, you'll soon eat those words. As the level design gets reused fast. After playing through one darkened street, subway, sewer, and dock, you'll see them all again really quick. It would have been nice if each level had its own unique design, even if that meant less levels and bosses. Frank's sprite is big and detailed, as are the bosses, with some boss fights seeing reminiscent of Nintendo's Punch-Out. The enemy sprites are okay, but like the levels, they get overused quickly. But their death animations give the game a satisfying feel. I give the graphics a 2.5 out of 5. Sound. The gunfire from Frank's machine gun sounds great. It feels good to let loose a full auto blast of lead to these dirtbags faces. But that's it. Everything else in this category is hot garbage. No music plays in the game, with the exception of that sax man and his 20 second song. And during boss fights or the menu. 
The game is largely silent and enemy gunfire doesn't match the intensity of Frank's. I give the sound a 1.5 out of 5. Gameplay. There's a shell of a good game here, and with some polish, it could have been a contender. But as it is, it seems to have a death wish. Had more time been spent on level design, tightening up the controls, and maybe adding a second player mode. It could have been a hit, which is a shame, because the source material lends itself perfectly to video games. I give the gameplay a 2.5 out of five. It's a worthy weekend rental, however, perhaps paired with a Death Wish or Dirty Harry marathon. Go ahead, make my day. Otherwise, get it cheap, if you get it at all. What do you call 125 murders in five years? Huh? Work in progress. 